Summary of Bag the Elephant How to Win and Keep Big Customers By Steve Kaplan You can eat a long time from a single elephant. Most businesses don't last very long. Even when they manage to continue, some end up in a rut and barely survive. They struggle with growth, money and results. They creep along like garden snails. If they experience a big shock in the marketplace, they are unlikely to survive because they simply don't have the reserves to weather the storm. Others rocket to the top of their markets and cause a sensation, only to sputter and fall from the sky after a short and spectacular success. Too often, these companies have built staff and budgets based on their anticipation of permanent growth, but when their markets change, retrenchment turns them into snails, kills them, or stalls them until they find a way to relaunch. Rather than being a snail or a rocket, become an elephant hunter. Bagging a big business as a client can supply your company with cash, scale, reputation, and contacts, and can even drive new product lines. Big customers also can help you attract higher, quality professionals to your staff. Bringing home an elephant can help you realize the dreams that led you to start your business. Others bag elephants, why not you? Many companies grow when they bag a huge, medium or small elephant. Even though you may face a lot of competition in the hunt for the elephant you have targeted, the first key to success is to believe in yourself. Believe that you can bag a big one. Remember that your elephant has to buy what it needs from someone. Why not you? When you are trying to bag your mammoth account, remember you get just one shot. If you miss it, you are unlikely to get a second chance. Once you secure a deal, the elephant will be proprietary and will want to be your first priority. Elephants have high expectations. You will have to be flexible, creative and willing to go beyond your current level of service. Think long term. An elephant has lots of meat, so don't try to get fat on the first meal. Be smart about pricing. Don't give everything away, but don't get carted off to the slaughterhouse because you decided to be a hog. Build a dossier on your elephant. Do your best to make your work with the elephant fun for it and for you. If you develop a strong partnership with your new big buyer, favors can flow your way, too. Focus your team to work together to capture the elephant or elephants you've targeted. Make it a unifying team goal. Provide training where necessary. Recognize people who are succeeding. Give awards to individuals and teams who move the company forward by getting these accounts. The size of the prize doesn't matter as much as the applause for outstanding achievement. The more you know about your elephant, the more you will get from it. Keep track of everyone you encounter in your meetings. Learn each person's role in the company. Study how it does business. Get on its mailing lists. Work through its bureaucracy, including its budgeting process and calendar. Know its vocabulary. The more you know, the more you can accomplish. Large organizations require intricate internal processes, not only to organize their actions, but also to protect themselves from big mistakes. Learn how your elephant bureaucracy works and find a beneficial way to tap into it. Analyze its activity, its bid cycle and its payment cycle. Study every piece of correspondence it sends you. You can learn a lot. Adapt your processes to support those of your elephant. Do not expect it to accommodate yours. The more you do to facilitate its logistics, the more likely your elephant is to want to keep doing business with you, if only to make its life easier. Which elephant should you stalk? First, understand your own business. Where do you get your revenue? What are your operational skills? What are your business goals? Focus your preliminary research on the elephants closest to you. Synthesize this information and pick a few potential targets. Then settle on the one with the most to spend on your product or service. How would your corporate cultures combine? Do its purchase goals and incentive programs align with your space in the market? If the elephant buys based solely on price and you are selling a premium product, that's not promising. Will landing the deal take you into uncharted waters? Do the target's leaders understand that they really need you? To prepare your attack, maintain a database of your contacts and prospects within the elephant company. Do a short, focused introductory mailing. 
Call a contact a few days later. Mention your mailing as you introduce yourself and your company. Ask how the company uses goods or services like yours. Try to determine their expectations in your product area. Find out who is now providing such goods and services to them. Follow up immediately with a more detailed mailing. If the prospect asks for a price quote, provide it. Then make another call to set up a meeting. Make the most of the meetings you get, but don't abandon contacts who haven't yet expressed interest. Do periodic inexpensive mailings until you land a meeting. Remember, the company's situation might change and you might get a call after all, even if they are unresponsive at first. A natural history of elephant hunters. Salespeople tend to fit into three broad categories. The sage, great with details and mentoring. Sales by using data and telling stories about your offerings. The pal, the client's friend, lots of fun, has a great personality and an expense account. Given his or her usual weakness when it comes to details, provide the pal with clear product information to give prospective clients. The pit bull makes a lot of money and is all business. This dogged worker can win business, but might be less successful in building long term accounts. To hold the account, provide additional support. The sales force's triple threat, the chameleon, is quite valuable because he or she combines these styles and can switch among them as needed. Be careful and honest with yourself about your salespeople as you determine who to assign to ride your elephant. Consider whether you are properly armed or if you need to muster new forces to get your prize. Standing in front of the prey. Don't take a canned pitch to a once-in-a-lifetime meeting. Bring your top team and prepare something brief and attention-grabbing so you can make a memorable impression. Focus on the elephant's needs, not on what you are selling. Show the target company how you will become the best member of its team and fulfill every commitment. Build goodwill rather than trying to convince prospects that they will have to shut down if they don't buy from you. Show that you will simplify their lives. Convince them of your credibility by offering stories and evidence of your experience. Build a personal relationship with everyone on your client's team. Make them all feel that they matter. If you get a no, learn from it rather than feeling defeated. The elephant will use its size and power to intimidate you, but don't fall for it. Negotiate with the people, not the ponderous power. When you build your proposal, include items you can concede. Don't fold your hand too soon. Make sure you can cover unforeseen problems. Be very careful with pricing, list contingencies that could change it. Don't cheapen your quality and service to meet a too low price request. You will ruin your reputation and lose money. Account for all your costs. Don't assume that being asked for a proposal, RFP, is a blessing or that you are getting a real shot at a deal. Use add-ons to give yourself a margin. Develop an inside salesperson on your elephant's team. The more of the elephant's employees you have working on your behalf, the more you will sell and the more entrenched you will become. Internal champions are supremely valuable assets. Look for those who make decisions for the good of the business, rather than going with the ebb and flow of office politics. A respected person whose advice is sought internally can be a great help. The more connected your contact is in the company, the better. Seek someone who can get things done by using the bureaucracy. Choose a person you relate to socially and can build a relationship with easily. Help your champion look good to his or her superiors. Never hog the credit. As you succeed and get better contacts up the ranks, don't forget those who brought you to the table. Always express gratitude. Expand your offerings to make your champion's life easier. Anticipate what your champion needs and provide the data and support so your booster looks great. But don't get too dependent on one person. Your advocate could move to another department or company. If that happens, use the relationship for introductions there. Get as far inside the target company as you can. Use its formats when you supply information. Understand your contact's purchasing power. Manage those with varying buying ability differently. The contacts with the least power will require the most careful handling to make them feel included in the deal. However, don't be surprised by common pitfalls. 
try not to jeopardize the deal by spending all your time with someone who can't make the decision to purchase. Ask your present customers inside the corporation to help you get leads into other divisions. Take advantage of any resources they are willing to share, you might even be able to use their purchasing power to help you. 5 Killer Mistakes to Avoid with Elephants Any business that bags an elephant needs to constantly evaluate and handle the dangers of having a high-profile client that dominates the revenue stream. Steer clear of these 5 major mistakes. 1. Mismanaging Client Expectations Nothing is worse than finishing a deal you think is a success only to find out that your customers now hate you. Perhaps they heard your representatives say things they viewed as commitments but that you saw as possibilities. Underpromise and overdeliver. Manage the account very closely. Notice everything and ask lots of questions. Beware of resource allocations, delivery dates and possible train wrecks. Double and triple check all client communications and presentations. Even simple typos can cause embarrassment. 2. Fumbling client crises, when things go wrong with your elephant e and they will, take personal responsibility and fix the problem immediately. Mistakes and missed trucks won't cost you the account, unless their number mounts, but how you handle a disaster can ruin you or make you. Avoid pointing fingers and assigning blame. Correct the problem quickly and you might actually strengthen your connection with the company. 3. Operation Explosion, understand the opportunity you are pursuing. Be sure you can deliver the goods well and profitably. Set your company up to win deals, track them, deliver them, manage them and support them while earning money. Spending top-line revenue while assuming that profits will come has killed more than a few elephant hunting entrepreneurs. Count carefully. 4. Elephant Trap – Avoid focusing totally on one customer. Winning a big account can lead to such a flurry of activity that you can accidentally let your older customers slip away. After all, the big customer is never leaving, right? But customers do come and go, often for a lot of reasons that have nothing to do with you. When your elephant leaves, you don't want to be facing a crisis you might not be able to handle. Make sure your contracts are sound and accurate. Ensure that your elephant is only a part of your revenues. As you get larger, strive to develop enough other business that losing one big client will be sad, but not fatal. 5. Losing sight of the numbers, you must understand your true numbers, particularly your bottom line. What matters is not how much merchandise you move around, but what you bring home in your trunk. Profit is the whole point of the elephant walk.